Hey guys, Peter Kramer here, and we've got Kevin tonight. Kevin, say hi. Howdy, how's it going everybody? So, uh, tonight I wanted to talk a little bit about this uh, beginner's mind, and uh, the reason why this, this idea came into my mind is uh, a couple months ago I had the opportunity to go to a Morgan Garrett seminar. He's from the Citadel, amazing martial artist. He studies all sorts of Filipino martial arts. And so um, I took up my black belt and I put on my white belt and I went to one of the seminars and I was just so amazed at how much I learned. And as we were going through some of the video, I'll, I'll put a clip on some of the stuff he taught at the end as he was just showing me personally some of the stuff. And uh, he was actually going through some of the basics of our art, you know, so I'll have uh, Kevin going to introduce what we're going to do tonight, talk a little bit about that technique, and um, and the reason why I liked it is because it's one of our basics, but when I was learning it from him, it was as if I was learning in something completely different, because he had a, such a different approach of teaching it, and different mindset, that it uh, really opened my mind to learning something new, so that's what I really loved about uh, that opportunity that I had to uh, uh, shed my black belt, right, and just put on a white belt and, and, and truly be a beginner. So, what are we going to do tonight? So, we're going to talk about uh, one of our Kihon Hapo called Moti Geku. And what do other people call that? Because this is a basic in many martial arts, right? Um, so, what's the common terminology in English? In English would be outside reversal. Okay, so we teach this basic off of a uh, a lapel grab. So we're going to start here and then I'll let Kevin go from here. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is bring my hands up. With this hand, I'm going to grab the meaty part around his thumb. Other hand's going to come up. The next step is I need to step offline and lift him up a little bit. Come up. Then I'm going to twist. Okay, so let's break this technique down a little bit. This is what it looks like. So again, from a lapel grab, first thing you do, my hands come up. I'm going to step off at a 45 degree angle while lifting him up with my elbow. Then I'm going to step into myself. I've got his hand out here. Then I'm going to step off at another 45 degree angle to take him down. All right, so from my perspective, you know, I always, get a lot of slack from when, when we're teaching techniques and people wonder, well, what, what happens if somebody does this or what happens if somebody does that, right? So this is a good time to kind of bring that up. And it also kind of ties back into that beginner's mindset, right? Because Shunryu Suzuki, when he talks about the beginner's mindset, he also says it's really important that you understand that in life, there's difficulties, right? So when you're doing the technique, in the beginning, you're just going to do the technique, right? Like you just did, he goes up here, he takes it up here, nice and easy, and he takes me down right there, right? But is that really going to happen in real life? Probably not. Because if I go to grab somebody, I probably have a reason why I'm grabbing him, and it probably entails me wanting to follow this up with some kind of a punch. So it might look more like this, boom, followed by a punch right to the face or to the gut, wherever, you know. So let's pressure test this and see what happens. And we'll go slow just to kind of see how things go and we can increase the pressure as we move along. But just to begin with, I'll throw in a punch now to see. You ready for a grab and a punch this time? Grab and a punch. Okay. Okay, so let's break that down, right? So what happened? So when I went here and I went to go punch, I can't reach him. And there's a couple of things that's going on here. Is number one, he's lifting me, so he's taking me up on onto my toes here. I can't physically reach him even if I extend out in this posture that he's got me in. So the next thing I'm gonna wanna naturally do is step to regain my balance and structure so that I can actually hit them. So don't move there for a second. What I'm, what I'm going to do here naturally, is if after this, I'm going to naturally want to come here 
where then I can reach him and I can do something, okay? So if we take that step by step, step one, can't reach him, I reset myself and I get into range. So go ahead and move from there. So he just stepped out of range. Because he needs to understand. Do you understand that why you move that way and when you need to move? Yes, because that punch is gonna come in real fast. He's not just gonna he's not just gonna hang out in that position. In real life, if he's trying to hurt me, he's not just gonna pause and let me regain my footing or let me find the proper angle to move at. He's gonna be coming at me like he means to. Right. And so I think what some people miss when they're learning the technique is they they mistake the technique as the end all be all. Really, the technique is trying to teach you principles, right? And that's the thing that we need to really focus on, is what are the principles that this technique is teaching me? If you can understand the principles, then you'll be able to apply it in a much broader situation instead of just focused on this technique against this type of an attack, right? So, breaking that down one more time, one of the principles that we're learning here is timing, right? So, here's the timing. He's got to move right away. If he waits, right, he can't, he can't afford that second of indecision, right? He's got to be moving right away. So from here, I'm not going to hang out here either, right? This is just temporary. We're just trying to break things down for you. From here, I'm immediately going to regain my balance and come over here, and that's when he moves to take the takedown technique. Boom. Let's talk a little bit about the weak line. That's another very important principle that you want to learn from this technique is a weak line versus a strong line. So let's get into fighting posture. The strong line is between the shoulder corridors, right? My hips, my shoulders. This is where I'm strong. I'm going to be fighting here. This is where I'm strong, right? So if he's in this strong position, so why don't you go ahead and get the sticks for me and I'll be in a strong position. And he's gonna line this up and create a triangle here for us. He's gonna line up one, one of these sticks with the back of my back heels. And then the other two, hope you can see this, right over here. So here is the triangle. And this peak of the triangle points to my weak line. So that's where I'm weak. So when I'm grabbing him here on my strong line here, this is where I'm strong, right? He wants to take me off my strong line onto my weak line. So this is what happens at the initial. Go ahead and do that. Boom. So two things are happening. You gotta lift me a little bit more. So he's pulling me off on my weak line, he's lifting me up, and he's getting out of range. So distance and timing are the two principles that are being covered here, as well as this weak line and the strong line. I'm going to get my strong line back onto his strong line, so I'm going to get over here, and when he does that, he's got to get back out of range again. Right? And he's got to be right out of range. Come a little closer. Proper distance is another very important principle that's being taught right here. What is proper distance, Kevin? Proper distance is the distance that you're not going to get hit, but you don't want to be too far away. We like to talk about a paper-thin margin. So on one side of a sheet of paper is life, the other side of the sheet of paper would be death. So if he extends his arm with that punch, it should be right here. Another way to look at it is kissing distance. Right. And the reason why this distance is critical is I would say that the definition of proper distance is where he is out of range, just out of range, where I can't hit him, but me as the attacker, where I still feel that he's in range. I don't feel like he's not way over there, right? I still think that I can reach him. And as I go to reach, right, I'm just, just right out of range. Of course I can lean into it, but that's, if I lean into it, he can also lean into it, right? Right, so and he still maintains his balance. That's called yo-yo. That little bit of slack that you can have. All right, so from there, of course, he's going to take me down. And there's, interestingly enough, I want you to observe his footwork. There's also this triangle that occurs, right? So go ahead and do the technique in a solo. So imagine somebody's grabbing you like this. 
Right? And he goes up here. So he's taking this triangle, and here's this triangle. And then where do you go? He steps to himself, right there, and then, and then he steps over to that other side for the finish, to, for the takedown. So you've got these two triangles that are being utilized. And the, those triangles will really help you gain a good uh, proper angles, distance, and timing, as well as teaching you about this weak line. Cool. So what is another good what if scenario? Another good what if is, well, what happens if the attacker is just ridiculous strong? Maybe they're really huge. And I mean, like this, if I go on and hold on and I just... Hold on like this and... Exactly, and then I try to go and do the technique, but he's just standing there like a statue and I can't move him. No matter what I do, I can't move him. And, and why is that? Maybe it's because I'm a little bit bigger and stronger than you are? That could be, that could be maybe a little bit, but for the most part, I'm not moving right. There's, you, you've got to work more than just your arms and more than just moving your feet. There's other stuff involved in this technique beyond just arms and feet. Right. So, the, the first scenario that we talked about is what if somebody grabs you and punches you, right? You've got to move. You've got to think about timing and distance. Now, in order to, why don't you, uh, let's, let's switch roles here. So, can you grab onto me and give me that big old sip arm? So, actually, you know, I'm a little bit bigger than Kevin, but he's actually much stronger than I am. He's a professional swimming coach and He's always, look at his physique, look at mine. So, I know that he's got a much stronger grip than I do, right? So he's got this strong grip. So if I'm just gonna rely on this technique, right? There's no way I can get this to work. So there's another principle that we gotta understand is, number one, you can talk about grip, right? Because if I try and do a lot of stuff with my grip, it's not gonna work. So there's this cool grip that Rob Reiner from the Zero Point Dojo taught us, which is instead of grabbing like a like pair of pliers, you want to grab like a wrench. And I want to be able to attach myself to this bone structure. So I'm going to take these wrenches here and here, and I'm going to use that. And understand, let go for a second, that a multi yaku is this outright, so I need to get this extension, and I need to get these hips to come forward and his shoulders to go backwards. That's the key to getting it to work, right? So from here, I'm gonna go here, here, I'm gonna take them off like before, and then I'm gonna just use my body come in here and take the technique. So we'll demonstrate that on this side as well, so you can see from both sides. So from here, it's really, it's a matter of just trying to get this position. We'll try and demonstrate one more time. So once again, I'm going to take this grip here, coming in here, and this coming in this way. And I, I need to extend this arm. You might even maybe kind of make it, like make it even stiff this way. Either way, it doesn't matter. I've got to extend them out here, and then you can see, as, as hard as he holds on, it doesn't matter. You know, as long as you do this, and you extend that out this way, then you can get it to work. So learning these what ifs are really critical to being able to get the technique to work. Okay, so now, Here's a big what if. What if somebody did this to you, Kevin? What do you think? Got here, I got here. How do you feel? Do you feel confident trying to do a multi yaku from here? Honestly, no. I don't, but we can always pressure test it and find out. That's a good, good idea. Alright, so let's go ahead and try that. I got slashed across the throat. Right. In, the real, in real life, I'd be dead. So, either I did something wrong, or... Just try one more time, man. Okay. okay. Kill it a couple times. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, let's reverse the holes, right? Okay, 
so that kind of worked because I kind of used the principle of, of timing, right? I knew that if he grabs and I see a knife and I wait for it to go here, it's, yeah, boom, right? So that one I use kind of the principle of time. Boom. If you can move at the right time, you might be able to get this to work. Maybe, right, if you're lucky, right? But if, if you're slow or you, the timing is off, like Kevin showed, this could be, you know, over. But this is, once again, this is not us teaching you a technique, oh, do this when somebody's got a grab and a knife on you. Like, this is a good time to try your multi guy. Nah, probably not. There's probably a ton of other things that I would do before I did that, right? So, keep that in mind, right? Um, let's try another approach, right? So what happens if timing, my timing's off, right? I'm not paying attention, he grabs, and this is already at my throat, right? Can I do anything from here? Let's, let's brush this and find out. So, one thought. We've been going to this arm, right? As I do that, I get cut, right? So if it's already on here, and I go this way, there goes the slice, let's show it on this side. Right, so as I'm going this way, I'm getting slit right across my throat, right? So if I'm gonna do that, it's gotta be before, before this comes and gets onto my throat. Same thing here, I'm gonna go nice and slow from here. Second step is coming out here, right? There's also a chance that he could get my hand or something like that. Right? But that's why you gotta, in fluid motion, right? Okay, so, now in this variation, right, we're gonna pressure test what happens if I go to the opposite level, right? So, because I know that this could be dangerous, and this is already on, so I'm, not, I'm probably not gonna try that, right? Instinctively, you know, but just like before, I bring my hands up, this allows me to communicate to him that, hey, you know, like, what do you want, right? I'm being submissive. This is part of kyojutsu, or being able to try and deceive the attacker into thinking that I'm giving up on surrendering. This is what the hands up means, right? So he feels a little bit more comfortable. What do you want? I want your wallet. Okay, I'm going to reach for it and get it to you. Right, so as I go to reach, I can use that moment to come in here and do a multi to the opposite arm, in this case, the arm with the knife on it, right? Because in moving in this direction, it takes it off of my throat, right? So I like that. So from here, I'm immediately just going over here, then I take this hip, and I have, oh, sorry about that. There's a good attack there, I can get that in there too, you know, potentially. But we're just focusing right now on the multi right? So, yeah, maybe, maybe if you want to throw that in, that's cool. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get this extended out in this hip over here, so I gotta block that hip out, and then I can take them down this way. All right, one last time, keep it better. Oh, hey, what do you want? What's your wallet? Okay, so I'm gonna go nice and slow here, just for the sake of demonstration. Take it out here. I extend him out this way as I take my hip out the opposite direction, creating this extension in this arm this way, right? And so I've got to, in order for this to work, I've got to prevent that from coming forward. So it's just a matter of that, right? Just using the hand just so you can see the effect. Because the multi gaku really, the position for multi gaku is taking the shoulder out this way and hips in this way. This is what is the indicator of a multi gallery, right? So notice that I take, I use my arms to take this, and I'm using my hips over here to block his hips. Well, that creates the multi gallery. Pressure testing a technique allows you to really dive deep into the principles that are being taught. Right? Uh, so that's the key that we're trying to get to you with this video, is as you're learning the technique, 
Don't stop at just the technique. Dive deep and try and figure out what the principles that are being taught, and there's not going to be just one principle, there's going to be multiple principles in every technique, there's multiple principles. You've got to dig for them, right? And that will help you to, and in order to do that, you need to start out with isolation, then slowly move into coordination, then you go into integration where you start integrating multiple types of attacks, multiple different scenarios where you can apply that in different ways. Uh, and then you just go and into escalation phase after that where you just make it harder and harder to do. What if this happens? What if that happens? What if they're doing the step arm? What if they're coming in and punching you? You know, all those different scenarios. We brought up just a few to give you an example of how you could utilize these principles into any technique that you're learning. One important part that I wanted to share with you guys is this idea that in doing this technique, you can really be setting yourself up for failure, right? Because what you're, in essence, saying to yourself is, as he approaches and does this, and I'm learning this technique, right? You know, in the isolation phase, I'm coming here, I'm going nice and slow, I'm doing everything I've been taught, boom. And, and it's really important to realize that I've got to go through that phase to get better. And, and, and then I got to move on to the next phase, and then to the next phase after that. But do yourself a favor and realize that you would never let somebody approach you and just grab you like this. Right? So the danger here is in thinking that this is okay. That it's actually acceptable for me to let him get that close. Right? Or to even let him grab me because I'm going to grab, grab you. Right? I'm going to the middle there. Right? I'm just going to grab you, okay? Right? Like we talked about earlier, if I'm grabbing somebody, it's probably because I have an intention to do some harm, right? So, we're going to teach you one basic technique. Let's try it from this direction. And it's going to base on that principle of the weak line, right? So, as he goes to grab me, I'm going to move him up over here. I'm not going to allow him to actually make grab. And once I move him off over here on this weak line, do you feel comfortable there or what are you going to do? No, I want to move, I want to get my footing again. Right, so that's natural, so I already know that. So because I know that, so I'm taking him off at this 45, as he comes back, I just move in with him, maybe put an eye gouge right in here. And now look at his hand, it's halfway into the multi gap position. All I have to do is walk right here, and I take him right down, okay? Very simple. Okay, on this side. Come up here, there you go. So as it comes to grab, I move off here. I'm actually like gouging right in here. And that's going to cause his hands to want to come back up to protect himself. From there, I can just move in here. And it's very effortless to be able to do multi gap from there. Cool. But that being said, why would I even let him get that close where he can almost grab me, right? So, if I have more awareness and more space and time to work with, I would probably do something like this. So if you can back up just a little bit there and slowly approach me, I might tell you, hey, stop, stop, stop right there. And let's say he stops, then everything's good, right? So do it one more time. Hey, stop, stop, okay? From here, everything's cool. Now, there's also a chance that he might go through this and continue to move forward, right? So let's say you do that, right? Stop, stop right there. Oh. So if he doesn't stop, I've got to do something. I can't have an empty threat, right? So from here, I just take him off here. And notice how this is the multi gapping position. So I've already got a multi gapping here. Now it's an easy thing to just take that and finish it, like we were showing before, right? Going back to the basics again. So if you guys maybe on this side, one, two, and from here, I can just go here. Once you get him in that position, doing the multi gap is quite easy if you get all the structure and the, the angles and the balance correct. It makes doing the technique quite easy. So, any last thoughts? Yeah, just to touch on what you said there, and what was really going through my mind, was it, it drew me back to when we practiced that real stiff ogre grip that you can't that you just can't break. Well, 
he's not going to be able to get you in that position if you move out of the way if you do if you do your timing properly is simplify things for yourself yes you need to learn these principles but um, bear in mind that you've, there might be some better options for you in real life don't get fixated on a multi gap you don't think that if somebody approaches you you can only put put them in a multi gap triangle on the arm we have a triangle on, so this is apex one apex two apex three we have apex one apex two apex three we have apex one apex two apex three so if he's attacking me with his arm and i'm going apex one to apex one right or i can go apex two to apex one or i can go apex three to apex one right so these are all these different apexes right i can attack apex one and apex one here and apex one here that's three apexes i'm attacking so what's happening here is I'm breaking the structure. And what happens is, is when you have a triangle, right, like this, all these forces are pushing on the stick this way, so it's a very stable structure. In order to break this structure, I have to bisect the line and collapse one of these so that these will collapse the structure, right? Makes sense. So when you're attacking with this line, the line I want to bisect is there. You attack me with a number one, right? Here's a stick. You attack with the number one, I bisect that line. As I'm bisecting that line, there's a slash. Bring that down. Get the gut there. Bring this over. Get the camera lock into the face, whatever it is.